AgriVision 2011 was the 14th multi-stakeholder conference organized by Nutreco. We organize these conferences because we believe there are issues in the fish and animal protein industries that must be addressed. Our conferences inform, inspire and stimulate new strategies that together can help resolve the issues that affect our industry. At AgriVision 2009, we asked, can we feed 9 billion people sustainably in 2050? The collective answer was yes. At AgriVision 2011, our objective was to find out how. The challenge of how to feed 9 billion people sustainably in 2050. But not as the Western world does now. It would take four planets to feed 9 billion people with a North American lifestyle. Canadian windy outside, but we're going to create a lot of energy inside, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, very welcome to uh, this AgriVision event. This is our 14th conference. We are extremely pleased with your participation again. 375 people. And I'm especially pleased that more than 100 of the participants came from outside of Europe. AgriVision 2011 covered many topics including biodiversity and identified enabling factors such as sustainable intensification, empowerment of farmers and smallholders, communicating by social media and even aquaculture. There is a tremendous concern on the loss of biodiversity and of course it has always been there but now the scale and the speed of the loss in the biodiversity is absolutely worrying and it will be addressed later in this program. Mr. Johnson? Yes? Mother Nature here. I'm here to collect for last month's nature usage. Nature usage? Okay. Biodiversity Animals, plants, microorganisms, their habitats and their genes is fundamental to life on Earth. It provides oxygen and fertile soil and is a major influence on our climate. It's the basis for food production, for the generation of fresh water, for fuel, fibers and many more products we find important. At AgriVision, Andrew Seidel of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature said there are opportunities for agriculture that favors biodiversity it can add value to products. Nature is the basis of all value, and that markets have a tendency to undervalue nature, and as a result, we make bad decisions. Economic valuation can help us to improve the amount of information available to make key decisions, and then, by having that information, by measuring better, we can manage better. This is the Cerrado in Brazil, and this is its story. WWF highlighted the potential loss of biodiversity through conversion of Cerrado in Brazil into land for agriculture. It's vital to our planet's biodiversity, but it's disappearing fast, and the farming of soya fed to the animals we eat is a big part of the problem. Half of the Cerrado has already gone. If we don't act soon, we will lose it completely. Big businesses can make a tremendous contribution towards biodiversity conservation. How? By really looking at their supply chains from the source to the very sales of their product and make sure that they sustainably source every ingredient that does no longer come at the expense of high-valued nature. Demonstrating that AgriVision provides a platform for sharply differing views, Pedro Arcuri of the Brazilian Agriculture Research Organization responded to the concerns highlighted by WWF. This brings us a lot of different biomes and therefore a lot of biodiversity. Are we intended to destroy this? Absolutely not. We have the largest areas preserved as such. Can you imagine a national park bigger than Portugal? We have it. Is it the only one? Absolutely not. So consider this. We want to save our biodiversity. Pedro Arcuri then explained how unproductive Sahado had been made productive, the lessons learned, and current measures to achieve sustainability. He identified several enabling factors, including entrepreneurial farmers, political support, 
and sustainable intensification. Sustainable intensification was a term first heard in the keynote address of Professor Louise Fresco. I have a very simple definition of intensification. It is about input-output relations, either more output per unit of input or fewer inputs per unit of output. So let that be the simple starting point. And now the question is, how do we make that sustainable? So there is, in other words, still tremendous scope to improve our productivity, even without going to any advanced research that's in the pipeline. How many of you have been born and raised on the farm? Empowerment of farmers, of rural entrepreneurs, was a key topic for Barry Martin of Rabobank, the AgriVision co-organizer. Rabobank rewards the environmentally responsible farmers with lower interest rates. We have to go to the farmer. We have to engage at the farm gate and make sure that the farmer becomes a rural entrepreneur so that he can invest in cash flows and grow his production, so that we can supply the demand which is growing tremendously in the world. Smallholder farmers were the focus of Gavin Neath of Unilever and Raoul Oberman of McKinsey and Company. My focus would be on smallholder farmers. There are a billion of them, their productivity levels are very low, and the headspace for improvement is very high. What are the things consistently we're seeing that are working? The one thing is inclusion of aggregators and smallholders. If you from day one do not have the key aggregators involved, and the smallholders, it doesn't work. Another enabling factor, according to Professor Tarun Kana, is to employ all the available intellectual capacity. If I were boss of the world and were charged with feeding 9 billion people sustainably, the first thing I would realize is that I'm not smart enough, that I better not just think about these 9 billion people as mouths to be fed, but think of their brains, think of their creativity, think of their potential, and tap into them and bring them into part of the solution-making process. It's clear the requirements on agriculture are changing. And if we don't change as well as the industry players, we'll be left behind. We need change, we need action, we need commitment, we need determination, and most importantly, we need inspiration. Social media must be social. Take seriously the idea of social. Building respect for farming and gaining approval for new ways of working is another enabling factor. It's also a communication challenge, especially communication with consumers. An unexpected strategy was aired in a lively AgriVision session on the use of social media. I truly believe that social media is changing the world. It's no longer something that you think about as an optional part of your business strategy. It's no longer, you know, the icing on the cake. It's a big part of the cake. 350 million daily users in Facebook. It's a tremendous potential with respect to end consumer thinking and consumer perception and pulse checking the market with respect to real needs. Social media is a very intensive, authentic, fast and direct way to have a dialogue with the end consumer and all of our stakeholders. Food for 9 billion people in 2050 will not all come from the land. Fish is an important part of many diets. But we cannot take more from the oceans without damaging the stocks beyond recovery. The answer, according to the FAO, is aquaculture. But aquaculture too must be sustainable. It must grow without increasing its demand for fish from those wild stocks to use as raw materials for feed. Knut Nesser, Nutreco Chief Operating Officer Aquaculture, described how Nutreco is helping to make aquaculture sustainable. The micro-balance concept means more fish protein can be produced than is used in the feed. Through increasing knowledge of salmon nutrition and feed formulation, the efficiency was already approaching one kilo of fish protein produced for every kilo used in the feed. Then, by applying microbalance, the microbalance concept in our grower feed for salmon, in 2010, we enabled salmon producers to become net fish protein producers meaning harvesting more fish protein than was in the feed they fed to the salmon. This new Traco approach was reinforced by Jerry Fahir, Chief Operating Officer, Animal Nutrition. Our core objective as an animal nutrition company is to deliver more for less. Our quantitative animal nutrition models are perhaps some of our best examples. These management tools help our customers perform more efficiently, they increase productivity, 
while at the same time reducing waste. We know that efficiency is the key, but efficiency without sustainability is not an option. Being in the agribusiness, working with animals, being in, in intensive livestock farming, are we as an industry, are we part of a problem or are we part of a solution? If agribusiness ignores the warning signs and focuses on producing more and more animal and fish protein products without paying attention to sustainability and biodiversity, it will be part of the problem. AgriVision 2011 showed that by taking the other route, by searching for ever better ways of delivering food sustainably, ways that protect biodiversity, the agribusiness will be part of the solution.